This lesson is about switching sequence management and we will see how we can perform the switching sequence management in ETAP. So on the screen we have the single line diagram and this is the single line diagram of an industrial network having several distribution transformers and one generator transformer over here. So what the switching sequence management does is to understand the response of the system during the switching operation. So there are two ways in which we can do that. One is a kind of manual way and we also have a sort of automatical way of doing it. So let us see how we can do the switching sequence operation in these two modes. So, so what we are going to do is that I'm going to put this bus. This is a 110 kV bus and I'm going to put this bus into permit. So in order to put this bus into permit, I will have to isolate the bus from the downstream as well as the upstream ends so to do that i will have to operate these three circuit breakers and these two isolators and afterwards i will have to close in these ground switches over here so in the ideal case the ground switches are the switches that are to be closed at the last instant so we cannot have the ground switches closing when the system is in live condition so we will have to provide a sort of interlock in there and to do that we will have to go to the ground switch and in the ground switch we have the interlock tab over here and in the interlock tab we have two logics over here we have the pre-switching logic and the post-switching logic so in the pre-switching logic is the logic which is to be satisfied before the action can take place and similarly for the post logic post switching, switching logic we have the action taking place and afterwards the condition is to be satisfied so i have selected the pre-switching logic and in the pre-switching lo switching logic i have put the close as active and i have provided the following switching condition so let us see what the switching condition is the switching condition is cb1 cb36 cb3 sw2 sw3 all have to be open you can see the and operator is used so all these conditions has to be satisfied. So CB1, CB36, CB3, S2, S3 has to be in the open status or the open condition over here. So here we can provide in these conditions by using the drop down menu available over here. And if we want to add in any other line, you just go to the last line and click on add. And after that you get new lines and you can also delete the previous lines over here. So I have provided in the same switching or the interlock interlocking over here as well the same pre switching logic for this ground switch as well so when you're going to isolate the incomer to your system you will have to turn in the backup power so the backup power is provided by means of this generator over here this is a 10 megawatt generator which is connected to a generator transformer over here and as you can see let me go over to the load flow so in the load flow you can see that these two loads over here have about 15 megawatts of power so this generator will not be able to supply power to both of these loads over here so we will have to provide some type of load shedding in this case so let us see how we can perform the switching sequence so I'm going to perform two types of switching sequences over here so let us see what the response of the system will be for these two types of switching sequences so let me go ahead and perform it so first thing you will have to do is to go to the load flow analysis over here and check in the auto run i am going to turn on the auto run and afterwards you will have to go to the switching interlock enforcer and i am going to click on this so we have the switching interlock enforcer active so in later versions of etab you have a padlock over here that's the same switching interlock enforcer so the first thing i am going to do is i am going to double click over here so in the auto mode on when i click any of the switching elements so it opens or close so when double clicking over here i have the generator turned on into the system over here so and that's it and afterwards i'm going to open this circuit breaker over here and i'm going to operate this circuit breaker over here this circuit breaker over here and this one over here so you can see during the switching process you can see that the voltage has dropped at this bus 
to 92.56 and when I open this this process de-energized and you can see during the entire switching process our generator is in the overload condition and then I will have to provide the load shedding so I'm going to shed this load over here and for that I'm going to operate this bus coupler over here so still we have the generator in the overload condition over here and I'm again going to open this and this so now the generator is not in the overload condition so as you can see that during the entire switching sequence or the switching operation taking place the generator was in the overload condition so when I followed this switching pattern or the switching sequence the generator is mostly in the overload condition so I'm going to implement another switching logic so let me do that and for the interlock option when I try to close this ground switch you can see that the switching interlock enforcer comes over here and says that the action is conflicting because these two switches are in the closed condition so now the switching interlock enforcer is not active so I'm going to click on this to activate it again so I have clicked that over there double clicking this this and now when I switch on the ground switch it gets grounded because of the interlock enforcer so let me go ahead and make another switching pattern and here my priority is to not overload the generator so let us go ahead and put our system in the previous state over here so now our system is in the previous state and let us follow a different switching pattern and the in this switching pattern I am going to make sure that the generator is never overloaded so let us see how we can do that I am going to switch on this one over here and I am going to open this bus coupler and this over here so load shedding has been already done over here and then I am going to open this breaker this breaker this one this one this one and this one so during the entire switching process you could observe the variations in voltages the generator overloading or the bus voltage variations etc so when opening or closing the entire thing you can see this so when I close this so here prior to opening this portion over here you can see that the generator is providing load over here so when I open this breaker over here you can see there is a dip in voltage and again when this is open there is a variation in voltage so during the entire switching operation you can see the variations in voltages the overloading conditions etc so this is a sort of manual approach towards this so by using this tool or the this method the operator can make sure whether there is any critical or marginal conditions that occurs on the system so now we observe the two different switching patterns and their responses by the system so in the first case you have the generator mostly in the overload condition whereas in the second switching sequence our generator is not in the overload condition at any instant during the entire switching process so this is a manual method of doing it and there is uh, another method of doing it that is by using the switching sequence management so the switching sequence management is available in the mode toolbar over here just go ahead and select the switching sequence mode so I have already made a switching sequence over here so let me go ahead and change that and before that I am going to perform this operation so the system will be in the previous state okay now our system is in the previous state and going to the switching sequence management and then we will have to go to the edit switch, switch sequences so let me delete in all of these switching sequences because I want to explain all of these and you can see we have the switching sequence editor and 
I can I can provide in the switching sequence ID so let me provide in a new switching sequence ID over here and here we have the switching sequence ID and let us see how we are going to operate it so I am going to follow the first switching sequence where the generator is mostly in the overload condition so let us see how that goes so when I click this on over here we have the switch closing over here and this is automatically updated in the switch sequence editor and let us just follow the pattern over here so this opens over here this this opens over here this opens over here these two opens over here these two and finally this so here we have the switching sequence over here so I'm going to I'm going to click this on OK and then I will run the switching sequence so when I click on the run switching sequence we get the sequence view over here and we have the actions populated on our single line diagram so let us go ahead and see this over here and over here we have the alert view so here we have the various alerts during the entire process so we can also override the pre-switching conditions or logics as well directly from over here so this is the condition where our time is zero because I have not provided any time duration or any time so let me show you that you can see I can provide in the time delay if I want to so say the last operation takes place like takes about 10 minutes to operate can be provided over here because all the switching cannot be taking place instantaneously there will be some amount of delay between each of the switching operations taking place so I'm going to click this one okay again go to the run switch sequence and see over here we have the alert as explained before and in this condition you see the action status is not available here so that none of the switching sequence is available and all these alerts are prior to the switching sequence taking place so here we have the execution control and in the execution control I'm going to click on the step start option over here so now we can see our first action is completed and these are the number of alerts over here similarly the next action is taking place and these are the alerts over here and I can go on clicking the step execute or just click on the auto execute over here so this executes the operation and after the time period it automatically goes to the next operation so here all the operations are taken place over here and these are the final alerts over here so during each of the switching operation you can see the various alerts occurring over here you can see still the generator is in the overload condition over here and it is after the tenth action you can see that the generator is not overloaded so I'm going to create a new switching sequence this is A2 and I'm going to delete all of these so I'm going to delete this and let us begin with the second the second switching sequence so that is this will turn on so we have the other switching sequence over here and I'm going to click on OK I'm going to run the switching sequence and go ahead and step start this over here and in this switching sequence you can see the generator is not at all overloaded during the entire switching sequence so here this is the automatic way of doing it and this can also be used with real-time systems where you can obtain the real-time load flow values and you can observe the system responses to your various switching activities so this tool can be used by operators in order to foresee what all changes you could create on the system due to various switching operations so whether you have to turn in the generator on first or you have to provide load shedding first or etc so the priority 
and the switching order actually determines the various responses on the system so here in this lesson we have performed the switching sequence management both manually as well as automatically and that's all for this lesson and i will see you in the next lesson